Alvis Car and Engineering Company Limited was a British manufacturing company in Coventry from 1919 to 1967. In addition to automobiles designed for the civilian market, the company also produced racing cars, aircraft engines, armoured cars and other armoured fighting vehicles. Car manufacturing ended after the company became a subsidiary of Rover in 1965, but armoured vehicle manufacture continued. Alvis became part of British Leyland and then in 1982 was sold to United Scientific Holdings, which renamed itself Alvis plc. History of the company Topic Early history The original company, T.G. John and Company Limited, was founded in 1919 by Thomas George John 1880-1946. Its first products were stationary engines, carburetors and motorscooters. Following complaints from the Avro Aircraft Company whose logo bore similarities to the original winged green triangle, the more familiar inverted red triangle incorporating the word Alvis evolved. On 14 December 1921 the company officially changed its name to the Alvis Car and Engineering Company Limited. Geoffrey de Freville (1883–1965) designed the first Alvis engine and is also responsible for the company name. The origin of the name Alvis has been the subject of a great deal of speculation over the years. Some have suggested that de Freville proposed the name Alvis as a compound of the words aluminium and vis, meaning strength in Latin, or perhaps it may have been derived from the Norse mythological weaponsmith Alvis. De Freville however vigorously rejected all of these theories. In 1921 he specifically stated that the name had no meaning whatsoever, and was chosen simply because it could be easily pronounced in any language. He reaffirmed this position in the early 1960s, stating that any other explanations for the source of the name were purely coincidental. Production was relocated to Holyhead Road in Coventry, where from 1922 to 1923 they also made the Buckingham car. In 1922 George Thomas Smith Clark 1884 left his job as assistant works manager at Daimler and joined Alvis as chief engineer and works manager. Smith Clark was accompanied by William M. Dunn, who also left his job as a droughtsman at Daimler to become chief droughtsman at Alvis. This partnership lasted for nearly 28 years and was responsible for producing some of the most successful products in the company's history. Smith Clark left in 1950, and Dunn assumed Smith Clark's position as chief engineer, remaining in that position until 1959. De Freville's first engine design was a four cylinder engine with aluminium pistons and pressure lubrication, which was unusual for that time. The first car model using De Freville's engine was the Alvis 1030th. It was an instant success and established the reputation for quality workmanship and superior performance for which the company was to become famous. The original 1030th side valve engine was improved, becoming by 1923 the overhead valve Alvis 1250th, a highly successful sports car that was produced until 1932. Around 700 of the 1250ths models and 120 of the later Alvis 1260ths models survive today. 1927 saw the introduction of the six cylinder Alvis 14.75, and this engine became the basis for the long line of luxurious six cylinder Alvis cars produced up to the outbreak of the Second World War. These cars were elegant and full of technical innovations. Independent front suspension and the world's first all synchromesh gearbox came in 1933 followed by servo-assisted brakes. The Alvis 1275 model was introduced in 1928, a model bristling with innovation, such as front-wheel drive, in-board brakes, overhead camshaft and, as an option, a roots-type supercharger. As with many upmarket engineering companies of the time, Alvis did not produce their own coachwork, relying instead on the many available coachbuilders in the Midlands area, such as Carbides, Charlesworth Bodies, Cross & Ellis, Duncan Industries, Ebertelli Limited, Gross, Gurney Nutting, Hooper, Lansfield Coachworks, Martin Walter, Mayfair Carriage Co., Mulliners, Tickford, Vanden Plas, Wayman Fabric Bodies, and Arnold of Manchester. Several cars also survive with quite exotic one-off bodywork from other designers such as Holbrook, a U.S. coachbuilder. 
In 1936 the company name was shortened to Alvis Limited, and aircraft engine and armored vehicle divisions were added to the company by the beginning of the Second World War. Smith Clark designed several models during the 1930s and 1940s, including the six-cylinder Speed 20, the Speed 25, and the Alvis 4.3-liter model. Topic: Second World War. Car production was initially suspended in September 1939 following the outbreak of war in Europe, but was later resumed and production of the 1270ths, Crested Eagle, Speed 25, and 4.3 liter continued well into 1940. The car factory was severely damaged on 14 November 1940 as a result of several bombing raids on Coventry by the German Luftwaffe, although ironically the armaments factory suffered little damage. Much valuable cutting gear and other equipment was lost and car production was suspended for the duration of the war, only resuming during the latter part of 1946. Despite this, Alvis carried out war production on aircraft engines as subcontractor of Rolls-Royce Limited and other aircraft equipment in its shadow factories. Topic: <laughs> Post-war Car production resumed with a four-cylinder model, the TA-14, based on the pre-war 1270s. A solid, reliable and attractive car, the TA-14 fitted well the mood of sober austerity in post-war Britain, but much of the magic attaching to the powerful and sporting pre-war models had gone and life was not easy for a specialist car manufacturer. Not only had Alvis lost their car factory but many of the pre-war coachbuilders had not survived either and those that had were quickly acquired by other manufacturers. The post-war history of Alvis was dominated by the quest for reliable and reasonably priced coachwork. Topic. 1950s Smith Clark retired in 1950 and Dunn took over as chief engineer. Before retiring Smith Clark came up with the Alvis 3L3, TA-21 prototype in 1947, TA-14 body with a six-cylinder 3-liter engine. After retiring he used the prototype Alvis 3L3 as his personal car. In 1950 a new chassis based on the TA-14 and six-cylinder 3-liter engine was announced and this highly successful engine became the basis of all Alvis models until production ceased in 1967. Saloon bodies for the TA-21, as the new model was called, again came from Mulliners of Birmingham as they had for the TA-14, with Tickford producing the dropheads. But with the first of these committing themselves in October 1954 to supply only Standard Triumph who purchased it in 1958 and the second being acquired by David Brown owner of Aston Martin Lagonda in late 1955, it was becoming clear that new arrangements would have to be made. Some of the most original and beautiful designs on the three-liter chassis were being produced by master coachbuilder Carissary Hermann Graeber of Switzerland and indeed these often one-off designed cars are highly sought after today. Graeber had begun to use TA-14 chassis soon after the war building three Tropic Coupes which were much admired. When the three-liter chassis was introduced his bodies displayed at the Geneva Motor Shows in 1951 and 1952 attracted sufficient interest for Graeber to set up a standing order of 30 chassis per year. Swiss-built Graeber coupes were displayed on the Alvis stand at both Paris and London Motor Shows in October 1955. With a license in place, from late 1955 all Alvis bodies became based on Graeber designs however few chassis and few bodies were built over the next two years. Around 15 or 16 TC 108 per gigasecond were built by Willowbrook Limited of Loughborough and Willowbrook was subsequently taken over by Duple Coachbuilders. Over the same two years Graeber built 22 TC 108 gigaseconds and complained that if he had received chassis he would have committed himself to buying 20 a year. Only after late 1958 with the launch of the TD-21 did something resembling full-scale production resume as Rolls-Royce subsidiary Park Ward began to build the new bodies now modified in many small ways. 
These cars, the TD-21 and its later variants, the TE-21 and finally the TF-21 are well-built, attractive and fast cars. However it was clear by the mid-1960s that with a price tag of nearly double that of the mass-produced Jaguar, the end could not be far off. From 1952 to 1955 Alec Isagonis, the creator of the later Mini, worked for Alvis and designed a new model with a V8 engine which proved too expensive to produce. Topic. 1960s Rover took a controlling interest in Alvis in 1965 and a Rover designed mid-engined V8 coupe prototype named the P6BS was rumoured to be the new Alvis model but with the takeover by British Leyland this too was shelved. By the time the TF-21 was launched in 1966, available, like its predecessors in both saloon and drophead form and with either manual or automatic gearbox, the model was beginning to show its age despite a top speed of 127 miles per hour, the fastest Alvis ever produced. With only 109 sold and with political troubles aplenty in the UK car manufacturing business at that time, production finally ceased in 1967. In 1968, a management buyout of the car operations was finalized and all the Alvis car design plans, customer records, stock of parts and remaining employees were transferred to Red Triangle. 1970s to present As part of Rover, Alvis Limited was incorporated into British Leyland but was bought by United Scientific Holdings plc in 1981. Subsequently the company's name was changed to Alvis plc. Alvis plc acquired British truck manufacturer Universal Power Drives in 1994, naming their new subsidiary Alvis Unipower Limited. The trucks were subsequently branded as Alvis Unipower. In 1998, Alvis plc acquired the armoured vehicle business of GKN plc, and the main UK manufacturing operation was moved from Coventry to Telford. The site of the Alvis Works in Holyhead Road is now an out-of-town shopping complex, but its name, Alvis Retail Park, reflects the heritage of the site. In 2002 Alvis plc purchased Vickers Defense Systems to form the subsidiary Alvis Vickers Limited, which was in turn purchased by Bay Systems in 2004. Bay Systems ended the use of the Alvis distinctive Red Triangle trademark. In 2009, Red Triangle negotiated the legal transfer of the Alvis car trademarks. The following year, the company announced that the 4.3-liter short chassis Tourer would once again be available. All Alvis records remain intact at the company's Kenilworth headquarters along with a large stock of period parts. One of the men to have worked on the very last Alvis car produced in 1967 is still retained by Red Triangle in a training capacity. Built to the original plans, the new car has been named the Continuation Series to reflect the 73-year interruption in its production between 1937 and 2010. It differs only in detail from the pre-war examples, for emissions, the engine is governed by an electronic fuel injection system with electronic ignition, brakes are hydraulic rather than cable, the steering column collapsible and the rear light arrangement reconfigured to conform to modern standards. Topic. Revived company In the early 21st century a new website launched five retro models from the company's past, following an agreement between the company and Bay to revive the mark. <laughs> All this automobiles <laughs> List of most commercial models, 1920-67 Topic. Racing cars Three British car companies, Alvis, Bentley, and Sunbeam, entered vehicles in local racing events between 1920 and 1930. Alvis and Sunbeam were at that time the only British companies building cars to Grand Prix Formula racing specifications. 
Of these, Alvis was the only company whose race cars were characterized by front-wheel drive and fully independent suspension. Alvis was a pioneer of front-wheel drive vehicles. While J. Walter Christie had designed the first front-wheel drive race car, which he drove in the 1906 Vanderbilt Cup, the next notable front-wheel drive race car was the supercharged Alvis 1250th racing car designed by G. T. Smith Clark and W. M. Dunn, which was entered in the 1925 KOP Hill, climb in Prince's Risboro in Buckinghamshire on 28 March 1925. Two months later, on Saturday, the 30th of May 1925, Harry Arminius Miller's Miller 122 front-wheel drive car was entered in the 1925 Indianapolis 500. Topic: Gallery of racing cars. Topic: Alvis aircraft engines. The initial Alvis Aero engines were license-built Gnome Rhone radials. The first Aero engine designed and built by Alvis was the 14-cylinder Alvis Pelides radial in 1936. Development of this and related engines, Pelides Major, Alcides, Alcides Major, Meonides Major, was stopped with the start of the Second World War. The Alvis Leonids, a smaller nine-cylinder radial, continued in development during the war and was used after the war in some aircraft and helicopters until production finished in 1966. In 1952, Alvis returned to 14-cylinder radials with a development of the Leonids as the Leonids Major. Topic: <laughs> Alvis Military Vehicles. The Hungarian automotive engineer Nicholas Strausseler had designed an armored car AC1 in 1932, which was built by the Manfred Weiss Company under license in Budapest. When Hungary aligned itself with Germany soon after that, Strausseler emigrated to England. Strausseler's small new company, Strausseler Mechanizations Limited, lacked the necessary resources and capacity to build the vehicle on a large scale, so Strausseler approached Alvis, and Alvis Strausseler Limited, a short-lived joint venture company, was formed in July 1936. The prototype vehicle produced, the Alvis Strausseler AC2, was built upon the AC1 chassis. The first AC-3 the first operational purpose-built armored car ever produced, was delivered in 1937 by Alvis Strausseler Limited, built upon the AC-2 prototype. Twenty-seven vehicles were built, twelve for the Royal Air Force, three for the Portuguese Army, and twelve for the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army. The AC-2 was subsequently used as a basis for the 39M Saba armored scout car built for the Royal Hungarian Army during the Second World War. Alvis Strausseler AC-3 armored car Alvis Strausseler Limited, 1937 Alvis Strausseler light medium tank Alvis Strausseler Limited, 1937 Hefty gun tractor Alvis Mechanization Limited, 1937 Black Armored Car Alvis Mechanization Limited, 1938 In 1938, Alvis produced a prototype armored light reconnaissance vehicle for comparison trials with other manufacturers. The Alvis Dingo lost out to a design by BSA Cycles but the Dingo name was adopted as a nickname for the BSA design, as the Daimler Dingo. Post-war, Alvis designed a series of six-wheel drive vehicles. The Saladin FV601 armored car and Saracen armored personnel carrier were first. The Saracen was built as a number of related vehicles including FV604 regimental command vehicle, and FV610 armored command post. The Salamander was an airfield crash tender. It was subsequently used as a basis for the stalwart amphibious military truck. The FV611 model was also built to serve as an armored ambulance, combat vehicle reconnaissance tracked series of tracked armored personnel carriers. The FV432 tracked armored personnel carrier and related vehicles was developed in the early 1960s by GKN Sankey and came under Alvis in 1998. The combat vehicle reconnaissance tracked family of tracked vehicles were designed in the 1960s. 
The family includes the FV-101 Scorpion, FV-102 Striker, FV-103 Spartan, FV-104 Samaritan, FV-105 Sultan, FV-106 Samson, FV-107 Scimitar, FV-4333 Stormer, and the Streaker. The first vehicle of this series was the FV-101 Scorpion, which was the first aluminium hull tank ever to be built. The hull and turret are actually fabricated from a welded aluminium-zinc-magnesium alloy. Seventeen Scorpion prototypes were delivered for field testing in February 1969. All this military vehicles All this ownership More than 20% of all Alvis cars ever manufactured were still in existence in 1989. The Alvis Owner Club, founded in 1951, is a club for all Alvis car and military vehicle enthusiasts. It has over 1,300 members. It hosts international weekends annually, where owners from the UK and overseas display their cars. The Alvis Register is a club with more than 600 members, dedicated to all things related to vintage Alvis motor cars 1920-32. Members can access technical and historical information and share their interest with other Alvis enthusiasts. Most owners retain an eligible car or cars. Topic. See also. List of car manufacturers of the United Kingdom List of aircraft engine manufacturers Notes <laughs>